Population pyramids are a really common way to show the distribution of a population in a particular place broken down by gender and age. In the last few years, I've made hundreds of population pyramids as part of a project that I've worked on called Oregon by the Numbers. Until this year, the population pyramids that I made looked like this. This is an example for Benton County, which is a county in Oregon. It's actually notable for the fact that it has a university, Oregon State University there. So you can see in the 20 to 24 age group, there is a huge percentage of the population. Now, the issue with this is that I actually made this as a single plot. You can see, for example, the zero in the middle. Now, the other thing I do here is I actually put the age labels directly in the center. I think this is great. I think it's better than having it on the left because it's easy to see. But the problem is this can actually cover up a portion of the bars. So starting with the 2024 Oregon by the Number reports, which will come out in September, I've made a change. If you look at the very bottom, you can see that the new version of the population pyramids actually has zero both on the women's side and on the men's side. And it has still the age labels directly in the center. But I made this in a slightly different way. Specifically, I made three plots, one for women, one for the age labels in the middle, and one for men, and then I tied them together. In this video, I'm going to walk through how I made this new version of the plots. In the process, I'm going to show you some tips that will help you make not just kind of ordinary, basic population pyramids, but really polished ones. Let's dive in. I'm going to start out by loading the tidyverse. Then I'm going to import my data as Oregon population pyramid data. If I take a look at it, you can see I've got county, age, gender, and percent. To make a population pyramid, I only need data for one county. So I'm going to filter it here. And then just to make it easier, I'm going to arrange by age and gender and print all 36 rows. So if I bring this up here, you can see the data that I'm working with. So for the 0 to 4 age group, you can see those are pretty small. But if we go down to the 20 to 24 age groups, you can see those are quite large for men. It's almost 9%. For women, it's 7%. Starting out, the simplest way to make a population pyramid is just to take this filtered data and then pipe it into ggplot. So on my x-axis, I'm going to put the percent variable, so that numeric variable. On the y, I'm going to put my age. Then I'll set fill to be equal to gender, so the bars for women will be a different color than the bars for men. Finally, I'll use gmcall to make those bars. So if I run this, you can see we've got a plot here. Now this isn't ideal, right? Because it's just stacked these on top of each other. So it's stacked the men group on top of the women group, and they're all going to the right. But a population pyramid, of course, typically has men on one side and women on the other. So let's talk about how we would do that. If you've looked at other tutorials for making population pyramids, you've probably seen that the trick to getting your data into the right format is to say, if the data is for men, make it one direction. If it's for women, make it the other. And that's exactly what we're doing here on line 27. So when we import our Oregon population pyramid data, we're saying percent equals if else. If so, if gender equals men, then just keep it as percent. Otherwise, do negative percent. Let me run this. So to look at this, let me actually add a view here. And so I'm going to pop this up. And you can see for Benton, if I arrange it by age, you can see for men, all the values are positive. For women, all the values are negative. Now, if I go back into my code, I delete that view. And I have the same code from lines 31 to 36 to make my plot. Watch what happens. I've got my plot with men on the right in that kind of salmon color and women on the left in that kind of teal. Now you can see with this plot, the age labels are all on the left, which again, I don't think is ideal. I think it's better to have them right in the middle because they're much closer to the bars themselves. So to make that change, I'm going to add a geom label. So you can see here lines 48 through 55. For my geom label, I'm going to say AES x equals zero. So right in the middle of my plot. 
And then I'm going to say label equals age. So in other words, 0 to 4, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, etc. I'm going to set fill equal to white. That will determine the background color of my label. And I'm going to set label size equal 0. Let me run this and I'll explain what I did. So now you can see I've got my labels in the center, the background is white, label size equals zero just means that there's no border around those labels. If I resize this a little bit, you can see, you know, it becomes a little bit easier to see. However, the big problem here is that some of the bars are actually getting covered up. Again, I can make this even wider and you can see them, but depending on the ultimate size you make, you run the risk of portions of your bars being covered up, which is not ideal. The other issue that we have is that the order isn't correct. If you look, it goes 0 to 4, and then take a look where it has right above 45 to 49, it's got 5 to 9. It's doing that because by default, ggplot will put things in alphabetical order. But we don't want 5 to 9 there, right? Like, that's not the actual order. So to change this, take a look at line 64. I'm saying mutate age equals FCT in order age. So in other words, I'm using the FCT in order function from the forecats package to make the age into a factor and have it just be in the order that it shows up in the data. When I do that, if I run this again, now you can see the order of my age labels is much better. However, we still have the issue of the age labels covering up a portion of the bars. So let me walk through how I dealt with that as I made the population pyramids this year for Oregon by the numbers. In order to not have the age labels overlap, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three separate plots. Let me show you how this will work. First, I'm going to start out by making a plot that I'll save as an object called population pyramid women. Let me just comment this and I'll show you what the plot itself looks like. It's the women's side of the plot but I've gone ahead and added theme void in order to remove all of the elements from the plot except for the bars. I'm going to uncomment this and save this as population pyramid women. Then I'm going to do the same thing with population pyramid men. And if I run population pyramid men, in fact, let me just go down here and add it. You can see we've got the men side there. Now the trick is in order to put these together, I'm going to load a package called patchwork. And when I do that, I can then stitch multiple plots together. I do that by typing population pyramid women plus population pyramid men. And look what I get. Next, I'm going to create the age labels. I'm going to manually create a tibble in order to do that. And then at the end, I'm going to use that FCT in order trick in order to make them appear in line. So I'm going to save that object as age labels. After I've created age labels, I'm just going to pipe that into ggplot. This will just create the inner portion of the plot that I want with those age labels. You can see that I just put x equals 1, y equals age, label equals age, kind of similar to what I did before when I had one plot. And I'm also adding theme void in order to remove everything except for those labels. Now I'm going to save this, so I'll just run the same thing, but I'll save that as age labels plot. Now watch what happens if I add that to my stitch together plot. So I'll do population pyramid plus age labels plot plus population pyramid men. And now you can see that I have my population pyramid with women on the left, age labels in the middle, and men on the right. I'm going to move this over just to make it a little more obvious. And when I do that, one thing you can see is that the relative widths do not look that great. I'd like to have the women and the men plot be bigger than the age labels. In order to do that, I'm going to continue to use patchwork. I'm going to use the plot layout function, which will let us set the widths for our plots. So you can see here on line 182, where I say widths equals C 7.5, 7.5. That means that the first plot will be 7.5 times as wide as the second plot, and then the third plot will also be 7.5 times as wide as that middle plot. So when I do that, you can see now my bars look much better. Now, there are a bunch of things that I need to do in order to improve this population pyramid. First, I don't actually know if I'm just looking at this, which side is women and which side is men. So to do that, I'm going to make some tweaks. 
I'm going to set the fill color so you can see that on line 194. By setting that fill color, that will make those bars into that light green. And then I'm also adding an annotation. You can see between lines 195 and 204 that I'm specifying I want to label and I give the X position, the Y position, and I say the label should be women. And I give the color of it, which is going to be the background as that light green color itself is gray 30. And then a few other tweaks in order to make it look good. So let me run this. And let me show you now what Population Pyramid Women looks like. I'm going to do the same thing for men. So I am going to change the color of the bar. You can see the color that I'm using here. And I'll run that. Now I can stitch these together again with that same code. And you can see it's very obvious which is women and which is men. The next issue that I see is that you can't actually see for each bar, what value it corresponds to. So I want to add some axis lines back in. So you can see here on lines 255 through 258 where I'm adding axis text x element text. So I'm going to add text at the bottom to show the percents. And then I'm also adding panel grid major x, making that a line as a kind of light gray, so gray 90. And that, when I run this, you can see we'll add both the, the lines as well as the values. Okay, I'll do the same thing for men. And now when I run this, I've got both those lines as well as the values. All right, the values don't look that great. First thing I notice is that they're not actually showing up as percentages. So to change that, I'm going to run library scales. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, you can see here on line 317, where it says labels equals label percent accuracy equals one. I put that within scale X continuous. What that will do is that will convert values like 0.050 to 5%. So I'm going to run this for women. I've done the exact same thing you can see here for the men. And if I run that again, now I've got my nicely formatted percents. The next issue that I see is that on the women's side, because we had to make the values negative, our axis text is also showing up as negative, but we don't actually want that. We'd like that to just be positive values. So to deal with that, I have written a custom function you can see on line 383 that will take a value X, will use label percent accuracy equals one on it. And it will also make it an absolute value. So in other words, if it's minus 2%, it will just become 2%. I'm going to run that. I have it here on the men's side as well, although I actually don't need it there, but that's fine. And you can see now all of my values are positive. So that's great. The next issue that I see is that the breaks are actually different. So on the women's side, it goes 0, 2, 4, 6. On the men's side, it goes 0, 2, 5, 8. That's kind of weird. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add here breaks equals breaks pretty. So the breaks pretty function also comes from scales, and that will give us nicely formatted breaks. So I'm going to run that for women. I've added the same thing for men. And now you can see we've got nice even breaks. One last thing that I see now, though, is that on the women's side, it only goes up to 6%, whereas on the men's side, it goes up to 8% just looks a little weird. So to fix this, what we need to do is we need to calculate, well, what's the maximum value on either side, and then use that to set the limits on both sides. So to do that, I'm going to calculate a value called max percent. Let me comment this. So I'm going to take my Oregon population data filter for Benton County. Then I'm going to use the slice max function order by percent and n equals one, which will give me the row that has the maximum value in the percent column. Then I'm going to pull that percent value. So you can see what we end up with is 0 0.89, et cetera. And I'm going to save this as max percent. You can see, there we go. We've got max percent. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my limits, as you can see here on line 530. I'm saying limits equals C minus max percent because the max percent value is 0 0.089. But for women, we want the maximum value to actually be 
negative 0.089. Okay, so that means for the women's side, it will go from that to zero. Run that. And then on the men's side, it will go from zero to max percent. So zero to like almost 9%. So I'll run that. And voila. Now we can see that the limits on the x-axis are identical on the women's side and on the men's side. You've now learned how to make a highly polished population pyramid. We started out by turning our women data negative in order to put that on the opposite side from the men. From there, we saw that adding the age labels in the middle made it look better, but could unfortunately cover our bars. So to deal with that, we use the patchwork package in order to make three separate plots, one for women, one for the age labels, and one for men, and stitch them together. Finally, we made a whole bunch of tweaks in order to make our plot look great. I hope this was useful. I'll be back soon with another video showing you how to make all of this into a single function that you can use to make a population pyramid for any county in Oregon, or indeed any place where you might have data.